Welcome to part two of Easy Daffodils in Watercolor. So now we're gonna go in and paint positively these tips off these petals. Um, and I'm going to uh, make my color combination and that is going to be my transparent yellow, which is the mother color, so to speak, of the yellow here. That's transparent yellow I've used here. And it's also transparent yellow I used in the background when we ran that into the cobalt blue. Um, so I'm going to stick with that for now. And later, I will most likely have to switch to another blue as I go darker, because cobalt will not go very dark. It only goes to mid-tones. So once you get into where you wanna have it darker, it's not gonna do it for you. So I'm gonna take some transparent yellow and mix that up. Spray it into it a little bit, spray into it here. And then I'm gonna take some cobalt blue. And I'm gonna put them together here but I'm not gonna mix one green because I wanna have a variety. So if I put the blue and the yellow together, but not like mix them, but just let them say hello to each other, then we get um, different kinds of green. So the more yellow I have in, the more you know yellow green it is, and the more blue I have in, the more blue blue green it is obviously so let's just see here I will start up here and so go on my towel just so it's not too too wet and here it's a small little area so I'm not gonna you could wet it first if you feel more comfortable doing that but I feel that this is such a simple shape and a very contained small area that I can go in and just go straight to putting paint on. So that's kind of boring to me. Can you see that? All the same color, you know me, that's just not gonna cut it. And uh, we have decided the light's coming from over here. I'm so glad I put a little arrow because you know, it's a week since we decided that and it, a lot has happened <laughs> in that week. I might have forgotten. So now I'm just dabbing in because now my leaf is wet with the pigment I put on. So now I can put a little bit of that darker, more blue, green on uh, the shadow side. And see, voila, how fun was that? Let's do it again. Eva, I have a question. Yeah. You use your tip a lot on that diaper brush. I do. And how, how long does that tip last? For you? These brushes here, I cannot exactly, but I think this is one of my original ones since, you know, has completely lost um, okay. the yeah. paint. And I bought that in, at, at Esalen, one of the, my first watercolor classes I took, really? probably 2006-ish. Really? And the tip is still going strong. And this tip is still going and strong. who made it? So this one was made by Daniel Smith. Okay, so that's, 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 really that's, good and that's the one you can't yeah, get anymore. So now you can get it from other brands. There are several other brands that make it, and you know they carry it at Nevada Fine Arts. I think you brought some because I bought one. For yeah, me. exactly. Oh, yeah, and now I'm Nevada fine. fine Arts carry them. Uh, so, and they carry them very, I mean, they're under $10. They're like barely $9. So it's really. Buy and it's dozen. just called a. Buy half a dozen, yeah. It's called what? Yeah, D-A-Q-G-E-R. Yeah, dagger. It doesn't have a 10 or an 8 or anything. No, it's a half inch. It's a half inch. Because it's it's considered like a, it's a flat brush. But it's, you know, on an angle. And so the flat brushes, they are not numbered with a, a 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, etc. They are numbered by the width. And so this is a half inch. And... Um, it's not so easy to find if you go online to uh, that look for it. Spelling D Dagger, D A G G E R. Yeah. yeah. I found some, but they were um, floppy. Yes, so you have to get the right kind, like this one here, because there's some other ones, they're longer. Yeah. And they're really floppy, mm -hmm. and they're, so they're great if you want to splatter or very, very loose. But there was no controlling they're, them. Yeah, they're not they're, good, they're, for, they're what not good for what I'm doing. That I couldn't That's, really do it. Is that just synthetic? It's just a synthetic. Yeah, it's just a synthetic. Um, is that a brand name or 
Within. No, That's dagger is this type. A half inch dagger. Half inch dagger. Hers is, she bought at Daniel Smith, Can't but they don't make more yellow. Daniel Smith doesn't make it anymore. Oh, so I like added more green. Oh, you added more green. Yeah, that was the original oh, color. And then I did a very light green. I I uh, so now I did the okay, same so with this yeah, tip here. I painted in a little very light green, and then I'm going to okay. dip the tip of my brush into the more blue. And then I'm gonna dab that in while it's still wet because then I don't have to lose the edge. It does it for me. And I know you guys hate the losing the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you do anyway. It's hard to master. It's hard to master. Hard so to master. why don't get it in while the paint does it for you? That's a little <laughs> trick. Mm. Because you know how it is with the paint. It does the best job of, of all. <laughs> so there's another little one. And can you see now they're standing out? Mm -hmm. And I didn't make them super dark. And I did think about the light because you know, and. I could, I might even go in and darken them a little bit later down here. I don't know. I can't tell yet. Um, so I have a couple more that I'll do the same way. Um, How about these guys? Well, these guys have already been brought out by okay. negative painting. Right. But these here, um, I might decide, like this one here, I think I did negative painting behind it, but it's not, it's not very visible. So I might go in and darken that one. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I'm going to put in a lot more leaves. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to show you one more thing. We have these little fun um, buds of the uh, of the daffodil. So this is the you know leaf part, which is called something special that I have already forgotten again. I'm sorry. Steeple. Steeple. Seepal, seepal, seepal. Well, that, yeah, that was good. See, you got her to get Part the right one. Yeah. Right? It's like a game on TV. Yeah. So <laughs> the same thing. I put a little bit of that in, and I'm gonna dab in a little bit of the darker color here. And then, you know, those daffodils, they have this kind of fun thing. You know that they have like a, mm, I don't know if we have any other pictures oh yeah so you can see here right you can see a little bit on there it looks like paper yeah, yeah. yeah it looks like paper that says yeah. a special kind of yeah, uh, right. little yeah, little uh, veil like yeah. cover yeah. um so i think that's this one maybe here at least it is in mine so i'm going to grab a little bit <laughs> of whoops that wasn't the right color i'm going to grab a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and i'm going to gray it down a little bit. Let's see. Maybe even more with a little bit of the blue. No, that's not what I'm looking for, so I have to search a little bit. Um, that's because I, by mistake, dipped in my... See how close they look? Yeah, when uh, yeah. That's uh, quinacridone gold, and this is burnt shenna, and it was burnt shenna I was after. So let's get a little bit of burnt shenna, and then... Let's get a tiny bit of cobalt blue, and they should kind of neutralize each other. There's a brownish, but it's too brown. So I'm there, that's kind of what I'm mm -hmm. looking for. There, that's what I'm looking for. And very watered down. And I think I want to put it on while the green is still a little damp. I think that could be good if I don't get like a really hard edge. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on, just like that. Pull it up a little bit more. All right, so then now I have to leave it alone. Um, and I'm thinking, might even wanna lift out a little bit, because don't feel mm -hmm. it's very dark. Right. It's oh, kind of like that, it's almost like see-through a little bit. Yeah, so it's nice good. if we can get yeah. a little bit of that. I think that worked out well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks more like that. Yeah, exactly. So. Again, it's not for a botanical magazine, but still, no. we wanted to yeah. read right. So then I wanted to show you, remember I, I drew in a couple of these leaves that are uh, folded over. Sometimes, you know, they just kind of bend, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so underneath there would be darker, right underneath here, because the light doesn't come in here, right? So that top side of the the part that's bent over, that's going to be lighter because it's catching the light. But here, behind it, it's going to be darker. 
I'm just going to be a little bit darker down here, like that. And then I just want to lose the edge, because I want to keep that light edge on this side. Mm, that worked out well. Mm -hmm. Can you see how now it looks much more mm -hmm. like a leaf? And the first uh, few times here, uh, the painting is going to look kind of a little not so great in the beginning. It's one of those we just got to keep going, keep going, <laughs> keep going. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and, for instance, here, going to put in, I think that would be the stem of that bud I have up there. Yeah. So that would work. And then here's another stem. Maybe this one comes uh, at a little bit of an angle. So it'll be like this, and then it'll come out on the other side here. That didn't look, that didn't line up. And, you know, it doesn't have, I mean, it's not like a math problem, but still, as long as it looks somewhat, that would be good. And then I think this one needs to be a little fatter down here. There. So, and uh, what else? Uh, I'll have some more leaves going behind here and then it's going behind the flower and I don't know where it's ending but the reason I wanted to just put those couple in is like now we're going to go in this time we'll go a little darker and now we're going to go in and paint in those new smaller negative spaces that we just created there and I got into the stem a little bit I'll check that off um, so I want to go even darker than that, especially down here. And then the same here. And so now it's like we have another dimension on these here. Still a little light. I might have to go darker. I don't know. Might have to go darker later. And there's also here. Boom. And here. So can you see how we're building up mm -hmm. the depth? Yeah. Pull that up a little bit. Yeah. Wow. And again, here. Here would be another one. I don't understand the term negative space. It's the space that's around a positive space. So it's the space in between that you can see in between all the stems and the leaves. I think it was derived from photography. It might be. From uh, developing negatives? I think so. So, but anyway, it is, so it is the space behind something and that space behind something might also and that's what i'm doing here um i'm filling up so now right now this is the negative this is a negative space because it's there's no leaves here that's a positive because that's a thing it's the, it's kind of like empty oh, space God. the background the background you can call it the background too because it's usually i mean it's whatever is behind uh but and the way you you build it up is so right now, this was negative space, this whole area here, right, mm -hmm. in between these two leaves. But now, there's a leaf further back that breaks up that negative space into two negative spaces. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to paint those, that kind of newly created negative space, I had already painted it once, but now I'm going to paint it again, even darker, and that will then make this new um, leaf appear. See that? So now I had painted one side of the negative space, and now I'm going to go in and paint the other side of the negative space. And then, so what happens is, the new leaves that I create, they are a little bit darker than the first go around, because I already have one extra layer of paint on when I draw in the next set of leaves or stems. So there. And I try not to get any lines 
in my negative space. I don't want you know a whole bunch of uh, brush strokes there. I want it to be just solid, so solid you know, with the no hard lines. And I can see up here. See if I now if I bring this in, and here I I'm already at the point where I think. I need to kind of kick it up a notch. And so I think I'm gonna go in with some French ultramarine blue to darken my greens a little bit more because uh, the cobalt's not gonna do it. Because see here, I already have a little bit of a darkness around that um, stem of this daffodil, so I need to make my negative space even darker. So you course, just added the French ultramarine. Marine to, to the, the green to I the had. Green. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's basically French ultramarine blue. Uh, there was a little bit of cobalt in it. And then, you know, the quinacridone. No, not quinacridone. The, the transparent yellow. Transparent. My favorite yellow. So you can see how, can you see how it just mm -hmm. makes it pop more? So try and make some more of these things. And then um, just of these leaves. You, that we started last time and if you already did uh, a go round of the first coat of negative painting you can go in and create some more and do some more negative painting and every time you, d you do it you know you're breaking up the spaces into smaller and smaller spaces and they're going to be darker and darker and darker. I have a question. When you yeah. come to this part where there's Yes, that's a good question. Oh, so here, good <laughs> a very good question. So I had already, I didn't, I don't think I did any negative painting around here yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. So I should do that. And so here, these here were the easy ones because they're captured. Yeah. I mean, that means that there is, you know, a thing on either side of them. So there's a leaf. Uh, a leaf or a stem, a petal, and a petal, and then the edge of the painting. So it's captured. It, it doesn't go on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So those are easy. <laughs> Here, you have to make a decision. You know, I don't want to darken and make my whole picture green. <laughs> so I got to make a decision. So let me show you my decision is going to be. Um, Let's do this one first. So I'm going to go back to my not quite as dark um, green. So I'm going to outline this one and going to outline this one. And I can go up to this petal that's sticking out and get just around that. And this is where you got to be a little fast because I don't want it to dry on me. And then I can go to this edge of this petal, uh, no, or leaf, rather, it's a leaf. So I'm going up to here, and I'm dabbing in extra pigment so it doesn't dry on me so I can hold it up. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. But I don't want a hard line like that. If you have a hard line like that, you have to explain what it is. Well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. So I'm gonna clean out my brush now. Uh, and with a damp, not wet, but damp brush, I'm gonna go in and stick my tip into that edge that I just left mm -hmm. and kind of pull that pigment out like that. And then now I have pigment on my brush. I gotta rinse it again, dab it and pull it out some more so that it just kind of mm -hmm. dissipates into nothing. So there's not like a hard edge, there's a little bit of an edge. I gotta go a little bit further here. And now I actually think I wanna go to a little bit of cobalt mm -hmm. because it's moving into cobalt and I don't want it to oh, get too green, you know? Right. So then I can go in and put a little bit of cobalt in mm -hmm. and then rinse out my brush again and then hopefully just kind of make that disappear into nothing, much better. It's better. It's oh, not great, amazing. but it's better. And I'm not going to worry about it too much because once this is dry, I'm going to paint in, you know, I'm going to go draw in some more petals. So especially if you have kind of like a, an area that didn't turn out so great, mm -hmm. well, fabulous to put in some more background leaves. And I'll show you that. We'll leave that area. And then I up here, 
I can't probably paint that. But then I would go in because I don't want to really paint negative around these here, just like I didn't want to do it around those. So then I got to paint them in positively. So now I'm putting a little bit of that dark color on. I'm doing it a little bit different than I did the first time around. Now I'm putting a little bit of that dark on the dark side, on the shadow side of this. And then rinse out my brush, dab, dab. Maybe dab into a little bit of the yellow green. And then just kind of pull it out like that. And there's, now you can see that leaf, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Lift out a little bit, I want it a little lighter. So that one I'm gonna paint, pos that was positive. And then here I have my little, my little buds. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more yellow so I can see it. So I just put a little bit of yellow in, mm -hmm. transparent yellow, and then I'm just gonna pull that color out just so now I can see the bud. And then we'll have to wait until it's dry, and then we can go in and put a little bit of some shadow color on and build, you know, those little squished up leaves, uh, petals. As you can see, I found a bunch more leaves. I painted <laughs> yeah. in more little um, darker negative areas. It gets darker every time, and you know, there's some, there's lots of imperfections and I don't worry about that right yet we can f we can clean up uh, areas as we go but I wanted to show you that like here for instance see I have um, a leaf that goes behind the petal there and it's also crossing over this leaf here so I want to push back I need to push back this leaf that's behind, so I'm just gonna give that a little bit of color right underneath where it's crossing over, and then it can go light again. Can you see that? So nobody says it has to be the same color the whole way. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't. Um, I have kind of the same thing going on here. See, I, I drew in a leaf here, and it's crossing over this leaf that is on top of this leaf, but down here, I need this leaf to be darker than it is up here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. There's a little tiny bit of darkness right in there. There's a little, these are these little gems of captured negative spaces, those are golden. Because they there's a very little area and it's a big impact. And so now I'm again I'm putting just a little bit of color on this leaf right where it goes under what meets or you know mm -hmm. is crossed by this other leaf anything that's closer to you would be lighter and brighter things that are further away and this one would be a little bit further away gets darker and often bluer so but i don't want it that dark here because then i lose what i just put in right so i gotta lose the edge just like that can you see that so it's mm -hmm. darker down there then it gets light because it needs to be lighter than this one. <sighs> so, Did what you else? The camera? Yes, the camera's on. Thanks for reminding me. Um, and then, so in here, I painted in, you can see I've gotten two or three coats darker here, and then I just drew in another um, leaf here. So I need to darken, and now I'm definitely in my French ultramarine green, so to speak. And so to bring that out, I can just paint in this new, smaller, captured negative space here. And also on this side. And see, the more I get these dark colors in, the more those petals, uh, no, those leaves that I saved from the very first go around, can you see how they come, they get, they get more and more visible, so to speak, because, you know, I'm painting darker and darker behind them, making them look lighter and lighter. That's how you make something to uh, look uh, lighter, is put something really dark next to it, and then all of a sudden, it kind of turns up the, the light. And so here's another little captured negative space. And it's also captured here on the other side. 
And did I draw in anything there? I don't think so. I drew in something up here. So, you know, you don't have to draw in as many leaves as I have here, as I say. I just, I, I love doing this, so, you know, I go bananas. <gasps> Once I get going, I can't stop. And it, it gives you more and more, and so I can also darken this area. Nobody says you can't go back and darken an area if you feel that it kind of could use a little oomph. But can you see how it's it's almost like it's a whole bunch of little abstract shapes, but they all kind of connect to this jumble of leaves that are peeking up in between the daffodils. Uh, over here, I have another one also that needs to be brought out. So that's this one here. So we go down. I drew in another one, but you can't see it yet. But the minute I'm done painting here, you hopefully you can. And again, going into my darker. And you can see how that then makes the lighter leaves even more visible mm. as we build this up. And then here I'm coming out to this area where it's not captured anymore. It's out into the open. So I just want to bring that tip out and then there. But I don't want to continue with the green all the way up. So I got to clean my brush and just have it damp before anything dries on me or going in with the tip and just kind of catching that little bit of pigment and dragging it up, clean my brush again and make sure that I don't get any hard lines there. And that way you can see those um, leaves now. And later we'll go in and doctor them up a little bit more. So now I have a tip here of a leaf. It's going underneath this one and it's going up into that area that's no longer captured. And so is this one. I don't really want to darken my background. So that's when I go in and say, okay, back to positive. So then I can paint this tip here like that. I can even go darker if I wanted to or brighter a little bit more yellow in, like that. And see, then it go, and it, it's perfect because it's a little bit darker, so it pushes out that one that's on top. And then I don't want to end a leaf with that color on one side, and then it has different color on the other side. Then it looks like this leaf on top is a border. So we got to connect it by putting the same color here. But I don't have to paint the whole way down because then I lose a little bit of that contrast with the background. So I just lose the edge and that way it looks better. At least I think it does. <laughs> and then down here it should really continue. And so that means I lift out actually a little bit of color right there. And we are operating with French ultramarine blue and cobalt blue and they lift very easily. So it's not hard to lift out a little bit there. That way, can you see, it kind of goes underneath there. Okie dokie. And then um, this one, so it's lighter than that one, but then there's another leaf over it, and they're pretty close in value, meaning light, dark. So in order to make this one look like it's on top, I should give this one some color. So why don't I do that? And so I'll do the same thing right underneath here. I'll give it a little bit of darkness there. And I'll do the same on top. I think I can do it in one go. This one can just go dark the whole way so it can really stand out there. But the other one, I want it light here. So I better lose the darkness with just losing the edge there. Can you see that? Can you see it? Dark pushes down, light brings forward. Cool pushes down, warm <laughs> brings forward. Yellow is a lot warmer than blue, and you know, green is yellow and blue, so the more blue we have in the green, the darker it gets, and also the cooler it gets, so it's a win-win. And here, I just fixed a little shape that wasn't perfect, and I got tons of those, so I should not get excited with that right this second. That would be stupid. Okay, so I have another one here I want to paint in positive because the background is so light and I don't want to darken it. So I'm going to put that positive shape and that's perfect because it also goes 
under here and I didn't draw it in but I know it's down here so I could just continue here and nobody says you can't have some of the leaf shapes be the dark parts you certainly can I should darken it even more see like here you see that and then dab it in here a little bit and then it could even continue down here I got into there a little bit but it doesn't matter I lift it out and afterwards when I'm all done with it I'm gonna spend probably about half an hour in my studio uh, going around cleaning out edges like an edge like that one you can see where I painted over a little bit all this I'm not gonna to get too excited about right now but that's where I would go in and later with probably a little flat brush and where do we have see if we can find any imperfect edges oh yeah they're all over the place so for well, instance see, here looks like the bugs ate it yeah that could be <laughs> fine but see see how easy that was mm -hmm. I just cleaned up that line a little bit and that's another thing nobody says you can't lift out some highlights if there's some areas where you thought oh it got a little too dark you can totally lift out some highlights not hard for instance here maybe I should lift out a little bit right on this one even though yellow is a staining color doesn't mean I can't lift out a little bit of a highlight see like that mm -hmm. and then I would go in and I would probably take some yellow that has a tiny bit of blue in it cobalt blue in it so it kind of has a little bit of a green tint let's see and then if I get, went in and did a little bit like that right behind there and then lost lost the edge can you see how now it looks more like a, a bud mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. right that's what we want and we don't we're not going to go crazy with those little guys there because they're they're kind of in the background but it's nice if we can put a little bit so now I took a little bit on a very dry brush of that brownish color that I had created for that funny little cover Leaf. I just put a little bit on an almost dry brush and I just ran in a little bit kind of like that maybe a little bit here too and I have to remind myself not to get carried away but see how now I think that's good enough good enough for me anyway and here we here I put a little bit of that green color in for the stem and then it runs into that cover leaf and I already oops um, lost the edge here a little bit because I really like it the way it is here where it kind of flows into another color I don't like it so much here I had it like a hard edge so I already rubbed it out a little bit and so I can put a little bit of water into here and then put a little bit of that gray brown color in so I get a little bit of that same that little cover leaf sepal is that it Sepals. Mm -hmm. Sepal! Woo. There. And we can do a little bit of that other color also. Just the, the greenish yellow. Just wiggle in a couple of little things like that. Just to say that there's hmm. little wrinkly things. And then, you know, always lose the edge. You don't want hard lines like that the whole way. But just a little bit like that. That way. This looks a little bit more like a bud. Run a little bit of yellow in right there. And then I'll do the same here. Run a little bit of that yellow in at the bottom here. Rinse out my brush. And just kind of pull it out so that it stacks down there and it's very light. And then I could also take a little bit of that brownish color. I should probably, I should wet it first. Of course, I think that's going to give me a lo more lovely effect. A little bit there. And that's that same, you know, grayed down burnt sienna. We grayed it down with a little bit of uh, cobalt. And I dab in a little bit of that color. That was too much water. And then I just pull it out a little bit more. And I think I might even put a little bit of green into it. I think that could be good. 
even more. And a little at a time. It's also, I, I, it's kind of good if I can get a little bit of darkness down here because it's going to help pull, pull out those uh, petals. And then a little bit of that greenish yellow right here. Like that. And I can do a little bit more here. But not too much. Because again, they're not, you know, they're not the star of the show. So when th something is not the star of the show, you don't want to give it too much detail because then it kind of thinks it's too more important than it is. Yeah, I think those are fine mm -hmm. for now anyway. So still I have some work to do there, but I think you get the idea of how that goes. I can show you a couple of more. Now, how I push it out really make it more dramatic. So now I'm going over to the darker green where I'm using French ultramarine with the uh, transparent yellow and maybe not quite as much water. But I don't want to go too, too dark. I don't want it to be like black. But I can go in those tiny little captured negative spaces I have left. I could really go in and really push them, meaning darkening them just even more. That's gonna make those stems pop forward as we do that. And here is another area that would be really good to do that. And so you can see lots of fun can be had with this. So there I don't wanna do it because I had the dark leaf. And doctor this up a little bit more. Oh, down there. Here, no, that was a leaf, So, but then this one could be darker, so I can tell. I couldn't even tell it was a leaf. So really, and especially at the bottom here, it could be really dark because, you know, that's where the light don't, don't come down. And here, and I got, I could doctor that up even more. It's, this could also be doctored up in this little area even more. This one is looking a little funky. So why don't we fix that? Can you see how these darks starts also really popping out the petals? There was another little area. And so you can see these little captured negative spaces, they are really golden because they, they help turn up the light in our flowers the more we can put those darks in down here. And I'll do one more. And then I'm going to show you. There. Oh, one more. <laughs> there. Yeah. OK, enough. But can you see how it becomes more dramatic? Yeah. As we um, get those darks in. So, lots of fun to be had there. Well, I guess we have to, sooner or later, we cannot avoid it. We have to uh, tackle. I want to get this demo in. I'm going to do it on one of the trumpets, and then um, I'm just going to find a good sample. This one, maybe. Now we don't have quite as close a view, but my feeling is that the trumpets, especially when we saw them in real life, they are a little bit of a warmer yellow. At least they are in my, and it's, you know, it's my painting, so I decide, right? And I need a little a differentiation between the petals that are around the trumpet and the trumpet itself. So I am gonna make that a little bit of a warmer yellow. It very often it is. So, I am going to get some transparent yellow, transparent yellow, and let's get some more. Let's not be stingy. And I think I want to clean up here and get a secondary area. So there's transparent yellow. And then I'm going to get a little bit not too much of 
the um, quinacridone red. So I'm going to put some here, maybe a little bit more here. And so you can see together with the yellow that makes a lovely orange. We already know that. But I don't want it too, too orangey. Kind of like that. Yeah, more. All right. So step one is we're going to put our lightest color on the trumpet. And so let me do that one down here. So I'm going to put a little bit of water around and uh, you can see how I'm kind of wiggling my brush because I'm hoping for some uneven edges. I'm not worried about the middle. The middle is going to be dark because that's, you know, you can see here. Mm -hmm. and this one here, see how dark that is? If you squint your eyes, it's almost black. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, uh, can you, can you, I don't know, can you see where I put the water on? I don't know if you can. Mm -hmm. Can you? Mm -hmm. Have an idea. Sort of, yeah. Have an idea. Okay, so I'm going to put, right away, I'm going to put some of that yellow on. Need a little bit more water on my brush. And can you see how I'm doing like an uneven edge? Mm -hmm. Because... It's like you have a shaky hand. It's a shaky hand. Too much yeah. coffee is brilliant for this. Like, and like you know trees. what? This wasn't even the one I wanted to paint, was it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's right. I, th I thought you got that one. I right. had that one yeah. water on, so this one's yeah. on dry. Oh well, so it goes. Well, I was going to say something, but then I thought, no, you know what you were no, doing. No, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So you can see, you can do it on dry too. I find it a little bit easier if you have some water on. It gives you more time to work, mm -hmm. but it's okay. I'll just wing it. So can you see? I'm leaving some little white sparkles, and I'm hoping to save some of those before. It dries on me. I just dip my brush into a little bit of that orange I had made on my palette, and I'm gonna go in mm -hmm. and dab in a few places here. And again, I'm trying to be as random as I possibly can because I wanna get that feeling of that ruffled edge. And then in here, I can already go in and do a little bit more orangey in here because it's gonna be dark. And I like to get it in while it's still uh, damp so that it'll give me a nice soft edge because, you know, I'm not quite ready to commit to a hard, hard edge. But okie dokie, I think that's already a good beginning. Mm. It's a good beginning and I can go in. I do want to keep some of that white sparkle on. There. So then it's already looking a little bit better, and it'll look a lot better once we put some more shadow on these here, but we can't really tell where they're gonna be until we got that first layer in. So you have more to do on the leaves. If you, I don't know how far you are on that, and again, you don't have to go as crazy as I do, and then you can do that first part. All right, so got my puddles out. I have cobalt, I have yellow, a couple of puddles. I have the orange that I mixed with the uh, uh, quinacridone red, French ultramarine. I have the burnt sienna, and then I put a little bit of the permanent magenta just in case I need it. And I'm actually thinking I should probably also just for the heck of it get a little bit of the red out there, which is quinacridone red. Alrighty, for all eventualities. Now, let's try and paint the flower I was originally going to paint for you, the trumpet here. So now this time I'm going to do it the way I intended to, with a little bit of a wiggle of water in a circle around here. This time you can see it, and I can see it too. So let's try that, and I'm going to start out with the yellow, and just put that in. That's the lightest of the colors, except for the white I'm going to let, let shine through some places, hopefully. So there's that, and then I'm going to dip into that orange I created to wet. I think I'm going to go with a little bit of the red since I have it. There. And just here and there, I'm trying to create those ruffles. And then on the inside, 
I can go with a little bit more of the orange here in the area that's going to be darker. And I like to get that in. It's going to be, you know, a lot darker than that. But I like to get it in so I can get some soft transitions. There. See how that works out. And so then that'll have to dry. But now we got this other one that I had created. So um, let's just um, get brave and do it. Oh, we'll, oh. Let you, we'll let you get brave. Yeah, let me get brave. So I feel that when I am looking at the photograph I took here, can you see how I do feel that the yellow here in the trumpets is a warmer yellow, so that's what I'm going after. That's why I used the red. And I feel that those shadows inside, they are also on the warmer side. They're not green looking. Whereas I feel the shadows more out here are more green. That's 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 what I see, so that's what I'm gonna paint. So I think I'm going to go with the burnt shenna and I might put some of, yeah, I think that's going to be a good combination. I'm putting some of the permanent magenta in. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see. And if you don't have that, you have. could totally go Burn with um, French ultramarine blue. And mm -hmm. so, you know, there's this really deep dark in here. Rinse it out. And it's going to be a little softer as it moves out. So I rinsed out my brush and I'm gonna kind of loose the edge a little bit and pull it out there. I think that's pretty good. I think I I, I, I like the color I picked. I think that works. Mm -hmm. But it's odd combo. I mean, to me. Yes, yeah, it is kind of an odd combo, but hey. Uh, and so now I'm dipping my uh, tip of my brush in pretty um, pigmented French ultramarine blue, while this is still mm. wet, I'm going to dab that in to really darken in here in the real deep, deep, deep depth of the trumpet. Ooh, that was, uh, that was uh, French ultramarine blue. That worked. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with that. And can you see already it's giving it more shape now? It's beginning to come alive. Phew! That was nerve-wracking <laughs> I will say okay so um, let's not be too timid here so I don't really want it with the blue I'm gonna go back into that mixture I made and I'm gonna drag out a few little lines like this to kind of indicate those little wrinkles in the or folds or whatever you want to call them in the trumpet because they are there I see them and so I do a little bit at a time and then I loosen the edges and I can even draw out from what I got I just want to get shape on this thing and I'm feeling that up here it's kind of a hard edge might even be be some little things here. I'm just gonna dab in a little bit. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just a little tiny bit. And then I rinse out my brush and then I'm going to soften it a little bit. But I gotta get some shape into this thing. And the only way of doing that is bring some dark in. There's just no getting around it. <laughs> no matter how nervous it makes me, I'm gonna do it. So now I put a little bit of quinacridone red in just to mix up the color a little bit and I'm just doing can you see how I'm just doing some little dabs mm -hmm. I clean out my brush and then before it dries on me I go in and I kind of mush them out so that they're not super hard edged there might even dab a little bit but I like that might go in with a little bit of yellow on top of that that's just transparent yellow and I go in and Put a little bit of that in and again I'm just kind of dabbing in and out clean my brush 
So this is just kind of feels almost death defying, but we got to do it. And I can see, I mean, as I'm getting braver here, I can see it's, I'm getting the effect I'm after. I hope you can see that too. There. So let's not get carried away here with too much. Just a little bit more of the yellow. And there, so it looks nice and bright and yellow. All right. Yeah, yeah good, right? Yeah. We have, we have, we have a trumpet. Woohoo! So let's uh, go in from the underneath because not only do we have to bring it out like that, but we also have to separate it more from the petals that are around it. So we already decided that those petals, well, we can go in with some yellow first. Why don't we do that? And it's still dry here, so I think it's going to be safe to go in like this. Mm. So, and it, on this side, oh, with some yellow first, um, yeah. just uh, the mm. transparent yellow, mm. and then of course loose the edge, loose the edge, mm. loose the edge, and then let's take a little bit of um, cobalt blue, might green it up a little bit, because again, we we just need to be a little bit darker than what yellow is going to give us. And then let's rinse it out. Loose the edge. Put a little bit more yellow in here. There. And that way we get the trumpet to kind of stand out a little bit. And then we have this part is even more in shadow. So I gave it even a little bit more blue. And then I'm gonna rinse it out and I'm gonna put yellow on my brush. Is that it, the camera's on? And yes, the camera's on. Thank you, the camera's on. And uh, here we are. Mm. Can you see how it gives it more drama? Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse this brush out really yep. good because you still want to have some of that light on that one. And I don't think that it made it look too green. I think it's okay. I think it's still looking yellow. So here also. Now I'm just kind of trying to uh, deepen some of those shadow areas that I already kind of indicated. Mm but I'm just giving it more, more substance, so to speak, more um, contrast to the light areas to try and get some dimension into this thing. And uh, I'm just gonna carry on and trust the process to here. So I'm finding those areas that had already indicated where there would be darkness, so that helps me a lot so I know where it goes, and I'm, instead of having a completely uh, clean brush, I actually dipped back into the um, transparent yellow to get more of that yellow glow on these leaves there. And now we can go in, and we can also try and give them a little bit more dimension this way. And again, very important that you go in and loose the edges so that it, so that it um, doesn't look like just some lines, but so that it looks like it's the petals that have, you know, little undulations in them. So uh, the color I'm using is transparent yellow with a tiny bit of, um, so I'm gonna go in and do a little bit more here, of uh, cobalt in. I don't want to go darker than cobalt. I think it's going to be too dark. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm going to lose the lightness, the yellow lightness. And so just lose the edge, lose the edge, lose the edge. And hopefully make it a little bit more dramatic. There. Let's see. Yeah, I like it. And I think it looks kind of like those leaves look like. 
we're gonna have to go even darker for some can you see like if you look at these here there's some deep shadows like here you see that mm -hmm. we got it we got it we gotta do it Let's see. So I'm gonna go more bluish, bluish green for those shadows. Let's just try it out. See what happens. I think it's dry here. So just, and see how where you can go in and make this edge a little bit more uneven. Let me even go on this side here. And then let's rinse it out and then soften this edge but that's gonna be kind of like the trumpet it's kind of casting a little bit of a shadow and I have the light coming from there so it'll go in this direction and normally I have really hard edges with cast shadows but since the light we can see the way that I have the background it's not it's not bright sunlight so it'll still have some shadow but it'll be a little bit more diffused and now I can go in and probably dab in a little bit more wow like that that's great that is yeah, brave. Saying, you're really, and you know, I know that um, <laughs> that um, it's going to dry lighter, and I just can't be too wimpy with this. I just feel that it's going to be too flat if I don't give it a little shadow here, there, go up like that. All right. Then we're going to do the same with this one. Burnt Shanna, Permanent Magenta, mix those two together, too much, needs to be a little darker, meaning less water, there, and get that in there. And then I'm gonna, I think it's a little too wet maybe yet. I can probably do it. Just loosen the edge here a little bit. You know, because it's gradually coming out towards the light, catching a little bit of light there. So I have a hard, a hard edge up here, you know, because this part of the trumpet is kind of casting a shadow and also um, you can see it's kind of like this part mm -hmm. this part here is that you see how that's a hard edge and it's a soft edge down there yes hard edge soft edge down there and mm -hmm. a little bit of that cast shadow too oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so yeah. that's what I'm trying to say with this Clean my brush a little bit more there and now I'm gonna go in just like I did with the other one while it's still uh, wet I'm dabbing in some pretty concentrated French ultramarine blue and just letting that bleed out into that area it's really really give it I, like that. Mm -hmm. I think that really makes it pushes it in there all right and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to uh, go in and darken again some more right underneath here. Might have to do it more than one time just because I'm a wimp. <laughs> just a little bit more. And you can see how I'm letting some of that white be because I think that's really pretty. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just dabbing in a little bit the whole way around the trumpet. Missing up my clean water, but that's okay. And I'm just trying, and then loosening the edge, of course, 
just trying to um, give it more shape by putting a little bit more darkness there where the petals are going in behind the trumpet to push it out and also to push these little guys out. And let's see, here it's going to be super dark because it's behind. Super dark is just, you know, it's not that dark, but that's that leaf behind here. Oh, not leaf, but petal behind here. I need to have that darker so I can say that this one's on top. You know, it's exactly the same here. Light brings forward, dark pushes back. There's some little dark thing here. And it's going to be darker here. And I think I need a bit more yellow. It's going to be darker here. Can even connect those two. And then kind of pull it out like this. And it's going to be darker. Still, I'm just gonna push that in and also here and on this side. So I'm just putting a little bit of kind of a greenish color on there. Bring that like that. And might do the same as I did on the other one, you know, drag out a little bit while the pigment is still uh, somewhat uh, wet, just to get some of those little uh, folds that you can see in the um, trumpet. And then we also did, didn't we? Yes, we did. We did a little bit like this. Just do a little bit at a time and then rinse out your brush and go in and loosen, loosening the edges. You can do a little bit, even a little bit more yellow in it, I think. Here and underneath here. It's a little too wet now up there, but that's okay. We can always, you know, this can be done more than one time. There. Tiny bit of this one, just to give it a little more. They also, all these little folds, they cast shadows on themselves. Can go up and do a little bit more there. But I think we're kind of getting there. Do you when need you to take the masking glue out of the center? Uh, when it's dry. Uh, do you put anything else over those spots or just take it off? You just pick off the masking glue? Yeah, right? pick off the masking glue. I'll show you when it's dry, okay. but I can't do it now. It's wet. So, okay, there you go. I mean, it's pretty close to finish, but uh, we, we first of all, we have to take the masking off. That always helps a little bit. So let's take the masking off inside here so we can see what we got. Got those little white things. They're supposed to be white though, aren't they? They look good. Man. Yeah, they look pretty good. I think they need to be uh, colored up. up a little mm. bit with just a little bit of yellow. So, and then I'm I'm just not I'm not feeling I'm not really feeling it yet. I these are so dark and I don't have any mm. a few little areas that are maybe close to that dark, but it's not really. I think the flowers are not really. Balance. Standing out gotcha. the way, yeah. So I'm going to just have to do something about that. Um, so let's get some more of the transparent yellow out. And I'm just going to do a very, very watery. Just like that. Just so they're not so, so they're not in so your face. Yeah. <laughs> so in your face, right? Yeah, I think good. that's better. Oh, perfect. Yeah. All right. So that was that, but I'm still not happy, happy. I'm not happy. 
So I think I have to uh, come to terms with the fact that this shadow didn't cut it for me. It just doesn't cut it for me. And I can also see here on this side, there's a little that should be, uh, see this, there's too big of a white area right here. So I'm just putting a little bit in there. That's just a minor detail, but still. Maybe a little bit here, just a few little things. Just to break it up a little bit more, I thought it was just a little too much unbroken there. So I have to turn up the sunlight in this one to make it stand out, even though I was saying, you know, it's, it doesn't look like it's a really sunny day, but we will have to doctor those shadows up. So how am I gonna do that? That's the question that I'm asking myself at this moment. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to go with some of the permanent magenta. I'm going to go with permanent magenta, and then I'm going to uh, make it more purple with some of the French ultramarine blue. More than that. That was permanent magenta. Oops. Trip right. I hate that. Too. I hate that. <laughs> get it out. Get it out. Get oh, it out. It's fine. Bad. It's fine. It became a nice little shadow. Yeah. It's a bug. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's a bug. <laughs> I can always lift that out a little bit more, so I shouldn't hold that it over my... Yeah. There. Um, so, more French ultramarine blue. And I think I want a little bit more. So I'm going to go with a complementary color to yellow. And I'm hoping that that is going to make it look more yellow. Oh. So let's uh, try this theory oh, out. This is going to be scary. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is really scary. It's really scary. So maybe I'll start on this one. Is it? No, that's not dry. So I'll start a little bit underneath here. So. So it's going to be like that. And it's gonna go. And this line has to be uneven, right? Because it's the trumpet mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. reflected or is uh, casting the shadow. So you wanna have this kind of a, an, uh, an outline on it. Is that dry? We'll see soon enough. And again, it also helps me depict um, the uneven edge, bottom edge of this trumpet. So, go in here, and then it goes down here, and then that's probably gonna be it. And light is coming from there. Let's just do uneven shapes. How's this trumpet going? And it's, so it's not only um, being the outline of the trumpet, but it's also, you know, the, the, the pedal here also has some shape. Mm -hmm. So, you can get away with a lot when you're doing these things. You know, it's whatever makes sense. I think it should be a little bit more like that. Scary. Scary, very, very scary. And so I want to darken up a little bit up here. And I'm just dabbing in a little bit more color. And then let's see here. Now that I've committed to d deep dark shadows, oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of this petal, right, is casting a shadow on that. Mm -hmm. And let's see, and this one is casting a shadow, kind of like that. So light's coming from there, it's casting a shadow in there. Let me try not to put my hand in the middle of my wet shadows. So there. Okay. That's... Could even go up a little bit more here. There. There. Okie dokie. What else? Oh, yes. Then we have... There's probably going to be a little tiny bit of a cast shadow underneath there, right? And same here, so the light's coming from here, so this thingamajig is be casting a shadow here. 
kind of like that. This little petal is probably casting a little shadow on the leaf or the petal that's underneath it. And then this one here, haha, that is also casting a shadow on this petal here that's underneath it, kind of like that. There we have it. All right. When, I mean, it'll lighten up a little bit when it dries. And then, if we have all those shadows there, I think we need to put a little bit of shadow on some of these, some of these underneath here. A little bit more. And it will only be on the stem here, or on the, this is a leaf. A little bit under here. Only on them, that one's behind, so it won't cast a shadow there. And probably here will be a little bit going down like that. On that. And let's doctor these up a little bit. You know those uh, leaves that are turned over? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. <laughs> let's just do it can be a little darker underneath there, right? Here I'm gonna just blend it out a little bit so it's not so harsh. Mm -hmm. And could do a little bit here. Won't be as much, just a little bit here. And I'll do the same thing, just blend it out. Yeah. And then I'm also going to be a lot braver Let's just see here, this one. I'm also going to be a lot braver with some of these um, folds in the... Mm. I those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of that shadow color because I think it's too wimpy what I got going on. Now they won't be as dark as the cast shadows, but they'll be darker than what I have. And let's see. And I don't want it to look too dirty, so pick it up. And I think that'll give it a little bit more mm -hmm. drama. Mm -hmm. I'm after drama. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, I wasn't too excited about it the way it was, so I feel I don't have too much to lose. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that can happen is I don't like it. And then you can <laughs> and then uh <laughs> And yeah, then yeah. you can look at mine and says, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I have to tell you, I don't think I'm that brave. No, and you don't have to be, but I just thought but I should nice. show you. Yeah, you brought in that all that color in there. I should show you that sometimes if you don't, you know, no risk, no reward kind of a thing. Right. So... It won't be a cast shadow, but I can definitely darken quite a bit more here. So you can see, I worked a little bit more with it. I loosened some of those really dark cast shadows I put in. I thought they were too dark. And then I tried to uh, bring in a little bit more dimension with um, emphasizing some of uh, the um, shadow areas on the petals. and. Um, after having doctored around on it a little bit, um, I think it turned out to be a pretty, uh, pretty okay painting. It's not my favorite that I've ever painted, but um, I think it turned out pretty nice. And here is the final uh, result after me messing around with it for a little bit more. Um, so 
enjoy. I hope you have fun. And um, I'll do another demo working with yellow uh, as um, the main color of the subject matter. It's uh, really a tricky color to work with, but um, if we uh, work on a few more of these kinds of projects, I'm sure we'll get it down. And I hope you have a lot of fun trying yourself. And I hope I gave you some inspiration, if nothing else, of what not to do. Um, and I will see you in another video very soon. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel below. And uh, wishing you happy painting.